The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Jesus and his disciples came to Jericho, and as his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho, Bar Timaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, Call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he is calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, My teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'd like you to do something maybe a little different this morning, but on the heels of that story, I'd like us to try and put ourselves into the story. Just for a moment, just for a few minutes, uh, to imagine yourself in the scene. You can close your eyes if you want to. You can keep them open if you want to, but just put yourself in the place, in the scene in your mind's eye. The absence of movement, the absence of color. Imagine you can't open your eyes again, this darkness, this absence. That's all that you will ever see. You're sitting beside the road on the ground on the way to Jericho. What is it like on the road today? Is the sun shining? What's the air like? Is it windy or still? What can you smell? The dust on the road? The animals? What's passing by on the road today? You can tell from the sounds. And the smells alone. Is it spice traders, livestock on their way to market? What do you hear? The feet of travelers on the road, the sound of hooves in the gravel, the rattle of packs shifting on their donkeys' backs, quiet conversations, occasionally the approach of a stranger. A few words of greeting, the welcome clang of coins, and the smoothness of the money in your outstretched palm. And on ahead, the comings and the goings of the city passing you by. But now there's something, a commotion. Now what do you hear? Someone is coming on the road. What's happening around you? People are shouting, what are they saying? There seems to be a crowd. You can make out a name in all the excitement. What do you hear? Do you hear it? Jesus. It's Jesus. Where have you heard that before? What have you heard about him? Remember the stories they told you? Jesus the teacher, the storyteller the miracle worker, the healer. He's the only one everyone has been talking about, the one your neighbors told you about. And here he is, passing through your town, down your street. People are pushing past you. He's so close, and you're hurrying, you're stumbling, you're pushing with your outstretched hands, and you're shouting at the top of your voice, desperate. You hardly know what you're saying. Can you find a gap? 
Can you get through onto the road? Where is Jesus now? In the noise and the darkness. But now there's a hand in your face. Shh! Be quiet. What does the king want with a beggar? And they're right. What does Jesus want with your blind eyes and shabby clothes, your bare feet and dirty hands. Now he's passing. Like everything else, he's passing. But now something is happening. There's a ripple of silence moving across the people. Jesus has stopped. He's standing on the road. And someone approaches you. You feel the pressure of their fingers on your arm, the warmth of their touch. They're leading you now back into the road, now to that voice. What is it like? What is it saying? What is he saying to you? What do you want me to do for you? Is he speaking to you? You blurt it out, Lord, I want to see. Now what's the crowd doing? Are they silent? Are they whispering? Are they laughing? What do you expect Jesus to say? Look, and you will see. Your eyes are healed because of your faith. See. See the darkness slide away. See the road. See the sky, the sunshine, the crowds. What are they doing now? How are they looking? What are they saying? See their faces, their eyes as they stare at you, their hands as they raise them up to their faces. And there in the middle of it all, see Jesus. What does he look like? Where is he looking? What do you say? What will you do now? As the crowd begins to move on, what do you do? Do you return to your begging mat? Do you go with Jesus? Take your time as you watch him. Take some time in silence as you think now. As you see now, what will you do? The stories of Scripture shape us. The stories of Jesus not only inform us, but they form us. They make us into the people of God that we are. There's a connection between formation and faith. In our life together as the Church of the Good Shepherd, faith formation is an essential to our lives as disciples. In addition to worship, small groups, studying Scripture, praying, listening and responding to God, lifelong learning and faithful following being shaped into the image and likeness of Christ. It's the bread and butter of the path of discipleship. Margaret Mead uh, once said that a small group of committed people can change the world. In fact, it's the only thing that ever has. I don't know that she was talking about the disciples when she said that, in the middle of the 20th century. But it sure applies to the life of the disciples. Small groups, small committed groups of people make changes. Back to the story of Bartimaeus. You know, as we did that kind of imaginative way of listening and hearing the story, Social science science tells us that we remember about 50% of what we hear. 
70% of what we see. But we remember about 90% of what we do, what we are actively participating in. Did you feel yourself in the story? Does it help you ask questions about your own faith to put yourself in that story and then be in your life? How about questions about blindness and sight and faith? In chapel this last week in middle school, we heard this same story and the students considered what it feels like to be flying blind. I know some of you know the literal flying blind, like driving in a rainstorm where you can, or snowstorm where you can barely see ahead of you. But we also talked in chapel about flying blind in other ways in our lives, like when we forgot to read the story or do our homework, and there's a pop quiz, and all of a sudden we are flying blind trying to remember and put in place what it is we're supposed to know. But we know in our lives there are even deeper ways that we are flying blind. With people we know and love and care about, and we're stretching ourselves. In our story today, blind Bartimaeus and his encounter with Jesus, What does Jesus say that makes Bartimaeus well? What is it that makes him well? His faith. Yes, right? His faith. But Bartimaeus asks for help, right? I mean, like some of us who drive blind, we don't do this anymore because we all have GPSs built into our cars and we can go anywhere we want as long as the GPS takes us to the right place. But we used to do this, get in a car, and someone said, you know where you're going? And they go, yes, I know where I'm going. And they would start off driving. And after about six or seven turns, you go, you don't know where you're going. And they don't. And then, to your frustration, they wouldn't stop to find out where to go or even ask for help, right? They just keep driving. That's not Bartimaeus. He doesn't keep driving. He's there, and the person who can help him is present, shows up on the road, and he cries out. He asks for help. But Bartimaeus isn't the only person who's blind in that story, is he? I mean, how about the people in the town, the friends? Shh, don't don't make a scene. It's Jesus. We've got to make a good impression. You know, we don't want you to make too much of a scene, even though he could heal your blindness. Shh. How about the disciples? Are Are they full of sight? Five loaves and two fish? What, you expect us to feed all these people? They had their blind spots, the disciples. There's there's plenty of blindness going around. And Bartimaeus speaks up. And Bartimaeus exercises his faith. This season, as we walk in love, We consider who we are and what God's doing with us and among us. Formation happens, and faith grows and is strengthened in many ways around us. Not only in today's gospel story, but in weekly Bible studies. Tuesday morning Bible study with the rector. Tuesday morning with the ladies Bible study. Thursday morning study group. Bible studies you may participate in with others, in the adult forum, in a Lenten teaching series, at fellowship opportunities like silver and gold or dinners with the rector at dinner for eight, at parish fellowship opportunities like fish fries or the 4th of July or the wild game dinner. We live into the 
scripture from Hebrews chapter 10. Let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but doing all the more as the day draws near. There are tangible and intangible benefits to all of these. There's no price on growing up in our faith, but a place to study, to pray, to work, to grow, and to give is tangible and precious. Formation and community life at Good Shepherd are ongoing. They're an ongoing enterprise, like planes loaded to take off. And it takes fuel to get off the runway. I know it's tempting when we're asked to give, to jump ahead and say, I know, I know, I know. However, there is something to be learned about listening, being formed by God with others, asking God for help, direction, guidance before we respond. I urge you to take time alone with God and to pray before you respond this year to walk in love. Last week, our guest preacher, Father Madison, called us to be lighthouses. Today, with blind Bartimaeus, I would add the encouragement that we be listeners. Listening lighthouses. Like Bartimaeus, we listen, we ask for help, we exercise our faith, and we respond. We follow Jesus. Help us to see. That's what this story is helping us today. Help us to grow all our days. That's what forming us in our faith is about. Help us to shine forth and bring others in the lighthouses that Father Madison so beautifully told us we are. And help us to return to God in ways that reflect all that God has given us. My prayer for us is simple. It's that one of St. Richard of Chichester. Day by day, dear Lord of thee, three things I pray. To see thee more clearly, to love thee more dearly, to follow thee more nearly this day and every day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.